Hi everybody, it's Valerie from Valerie Walls Fine Arts and I'm here at 8 o'clock on Friday, um, May um, 28th or something, yeah. 28th, 27th, uh, know, maybe the 29th, like the end of May, yeah. and um, we're going to do a drawing lesson tonight and tonight we're going to do um, a coastal scene with our favorite beautiful flower which is Lupin. Lupins, Lupins, which I'll tell you they're a good thing to draw if you're drawing them in a field. They're not so easy if you're drawing them in a vase. What is even worse in a vase are, what's those little yellow ones? Lilacs. Uh, it's very hard to draw lilacs. Although, oh, although Rosemary Dutons, she can do it. I don't know how she does it. Okay. So let's do it. Let's get started. Um, what I want to do first is I want to draw a line for the horizon line and I'm going to use this kind of grayish blue and the odd thing is the higher your horizon line on your page well I guess it's not odd the higher your perspective meaning that you're looking down you can tell that we're looking down from a you know from a higher level down onto the water that's why it looks the way that it does okay so start it doesn't make too much difference just somewhere in the upper third or so and draw yourself a line across like that okay we we have some sky but it's not the majority is that it is that straight <laughs> is that it we're done <laughs> all right and this is not good this is not this is not going to work i can tape the paper to each other but that doesn't mean that it stays down okay do you think down. that's high or no well i don't care about that i just want to know if it's level okay no, it's not high. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it could be, but not really. All right, over here, we're going to do the same thing, but this I'm doing with charcoal. If you're drawing with a pencil, you can kind of go with this one, but I don't want to draw with the pencils too light. Okay? The next thing that I want to do is I want to mark this area of greenery where the, where the lupins are going to go. Okay? I don't want to do very much, but I want to save that spot. Okay, so what I want you to do is don't look at anything else in the picture and see where it is. Okay, you know, it's a little ways down up here, just below the horizon line is where I'm going to start. Okay, I'm going to make a nice dark green line there. Okay, and then it's going to here, which is about right here. Okay, um, there's a little pathway. We want to have that little pathway. Okay. Um, the other thing that happens is this is where some light green is, but there's sort of a first section of it that's right about here. Do you see the difference? There's a bunch of lupins here, and then there's more up there. So we're going to draw this lump that's right here. Okay. So it starts right about here, and then it goes to about halfway down your page. I don't want you to draw a big curve because you will have to draw your flowers like through that line. And it will, it will always show, okay? I need you to save it, but I don't need you to, like, draw a big, a big strong line, okay? Um, but so what you do is just kind of, just kind of pity pat a little line like this. Pity pat one down there. Can you see that? Yeah. At all? Uh, uh, a little bit, but I'm it's very a, hard to see. I'm using a really, really light green. I will pity pat with a little bit darker green just for the sake of the picture. Lynn says hi. Oh, she's watching. I was going to tell you that I was probably, you wouldn't be walking at 8 o'clock with your friends. Okay? From here to here. That's the important thing. You're saving this area for the greenery. Okay? Okay. All right. Let's, let's also save this little piece right here, too. Okay? So what you do is just don't look at everything else. Just don't. And all you want to do is just, just don't. don't. Okay, so the lower part here starts about a couple of inches up in the corner, and it just kind of goes over towards this. Okay, because the path can go anywhere. And then the upper part is about halfway. Like if I drew a line right across the middle of my page, that one's going to line up with this one, with this hump. So right over here, I'm going to go over here, mark this. And this tree is behind it, so we can we can make a little grassy pity pat line 
like that. Okay? All right, this one I'm going to have to, this thing is in the light. Okay. I'm finding a spot here. Pity pat, pity pat, pity pat. It doesn't matter so much for this one, okay? It's here. I also have another, uh, I guess I'll just save that upper part, okay? Um, halfway here. Oops, I guess I did the lower part first. I started down low. And I went over towards here. This is like a straight line. And then I went like that. Okay? It's going to look awesome. Okay. The thing with this picture is that this tree overlaps this little bit of land. And this tree overlaps this little bit of land. And the question is, which thing do you do first? If you make the tree first, you have to realize that you're going to be fitting this around whatever kind of lines that you've made for the tree branches. If you do this first, you have to be able to draw over it with your dark tree. Okay, which in this case, because the island is really light and the tree is pretty dark, that works pretty well. But here, this tree is a little lighter and this stuff is super dark. So if we draw the super dark stuff and then try to put the tree on top, it's not going to work great. So, I mean, sometimes it's very easy to tell what to do, um, but this time, maybe not so easy. So, but I will do the... I'm going to start with the islands, but I'm not going to color them in super dark. So I am going to use a gray, which is here, okay, for this little bit. And the thing is, is the lighter, this light little bit of land, there's actually a little piece right here too. It's right on the horizon line. And it just starts kind of low and then just gets, but the, you have to keep it very small. So you're basically just taking that line and making it a little thicker with the gray. Okay? Just a little, I don't know, a little step of it right there. Okay? And I don't even know if I was going to do it. Oh, I was going to do it down here. <laughs> Green paint. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not here. <laughs> you, you used it up? No, I took it with me to the to the mural. It's still there. Yeah, but I thought about that. I was like, is that gonna need this dark green paint? Yeah, I'm and trying to make it, and I'm, it's no fun. If you don't have dark green, you need to either use uh, dark blue. Well, I know. Dark brown. It's just easier when I have it. Or why well, don't you know? Or um, even, e even a cool red brown or a light or a red brown. Um, or okay. I bet you could even use purple. Purple and green. It's kind of a yucky green, though. All right. Don't yuck oh, I want to do it anyway. yum. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm going to take a brown that's going to be a little bit of, like, rocks here. And so I know that... Part of this, part of this island is going to get covered up. So even though it starts over here, I'm going to start it right about here, okay? And this is lower than my horizon line, okay? So it's here, there's my horizon line up there, I want to drop it down a little bit. And what really tells you how far away this island is are the size of the trees. If you make the trees this big, the island gets a lot closer to us. If you make the trees really tiny, it's it's far away, okay? Um, when you do the trees, I'll take this dark one for now. You you prob One thing you probably don't want to do is just go to the horizon line. Either go above it or stay below it, okay? And a lot of times what's near the shore, I mean the tip there is a little smaller, and then maybe you're just, and all you can, I mean, for this, you can just draw, you're trying to make a few kind of points, 
that go a little higher than the rest, but you mostly just color up and down. Okay, I'm going to leave this over here. I'll have to fill it in a little bit later, but I'll just make it kind of scribbly over here. Okay, but right down next to my shore, I'm going to get very dark. Okay. This is a... This is a phthalo blue, which is kind of surprising to me. Not very. Okay, like that. Uh, maybe the ones in the middle are a little bit taller. And you're thinking about how they're triangular. You know, they're going to get a little wider as they go down. I'll give you a hint if you're kind of new. A lot of times where people have a little problem is that they don't make this part dark. Okay? You want to draw a tree, and then you want to draw the branches on it, and then, like, do one next to it. But what happens is, you know, look at this. You know, don't look at anything else and look at this. It's just a solid piece of dark. Whatever you choose for a color doesn't matter, but you have to make it solid. Okay? I will do this down here as well. So, you know, I'm going to keep this line relatively close to my horizon line so that the trees can overlap it. Okay? Um, and then, you know, I can, I can draw like this, just like up and down maybe all the way across, kind of like a toothbrush, okay? And then I'll take the ones in the middle and maybe go a little higher. And you can make them have a little more shape, but really, trees that are this far away don't have a lot more shape to them than just a little bit of pointing on top, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I just want to fill this in. I left a little bit of kind of rock stuff, but... trees, doesn't it? Yeah. It's an optical illusion. Okay? Okay. I got my hair in there. Beautiful. Is it very fluffy? Mm -hmm. I got some of my hair. Okay. <sighs> What's next? What do you think's next, Daphne? Uh, the tall trees? Yeah, let's do those trees next. We'll hold off on the flowers for a few minutes. Okay? So let's do this guy next, all right? And so I'm going to use my kind of dark, like a little bit dull green, kind of a, um, a military green. Is there a better way of saying that? Olive green? An olive green, that, yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's better, but. Okay, so I want to start with the, the, the trunk that runs in the middle, just a line like that, okay? And there, my, you know, my branches are going to get wider, so I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'll put that up here. I do want this tree to look bigger, so I don't want to go crazy big here so that I have to go enormo on that one. All right? What you're thinking about is that, I, the, I don't know if you can see this. I'll try to make it darker, and then I'll just blend it in. But you're, it's sort of a triangle. You see it? But the branches go in layers, and sometimes they swing up a little bit, and sometimes they swing down a little bit. It has both kinds here. And sometimes people have just like their own style of doing it, and, and you know, they get really good at it. It doesn't matter what the tree really looks like. So at the top, you want to have that one piece that sticks up. And then what I'll do is kind of make a little V. And um, I'm kind of lazy, so I just kind of do a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other side, and a little, and I go back and forth to kind of fill it in and make it kind of jaggedy this way. But I have those little dots so that I know that as I work my way down, it's going to keep getting wider and wider, so they're more in a triangle shape. So it's kind of like a uh, herringbone or a chevron. Yeah. Okay, and and then when you're done, if you a lot of times what happens is it looks rounded on the top, and people are like, I don't like it that. Just just take your line and pop that middle up. Okay, uh, and you can thicken. And the other thing about the tree is this: is that you're not doing a cross section of a fir tree. 
and that everything is just this way, right? You're doing, there are leaves going, I mean, branches going choom, 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 like this. So they're all coming out to the front. So as you get thinking more about it, you're going to realize that the centerpiece here a lot of times gets a little more color to it because there's a branch that's coming forward. So you're going to kind of thicken up the middle a little bit. All right? Mm -hmm. Sound good? Um, all right, I'll do it down here. So don't go to the very top so that if you need to stretch the top up, you can do it. So I draw the middle, the trunk, and then I draw a little V going one way and a V. Oh, actually, let me see. I'll, go, I'll make some little dots. I wouldn't always do this, but I would do it when you're starting out because a lot of times people's tr trees look like bottle brushes. And they're like, I hate my trees. And it's usually because it's as wide at the top as it is at the bottom. Simple solution, just make the ones at the bottom bigger, okay? Easy, easy. There's always a solution. And sometimes it's put it in the recycling bin, but most of the time it's not. <laughs> Listen, everything is not priceless, but it's usually a learning experience. But don't let it ruin your day. No. Kathy and I know all about having pictures not for her for her clothing or something not coming out well and it makes you mad at everyone else in the house wow um <laughs> i think you know about that too fun i said we both know okay you know even if there's no one home we get mad at the dog or something or people that aren't around yeah because it's a bummer it'll ruin your whole day but mm -hmm. you know then a lot of times, but you don't know until you try it because you might do something and be like, oh, I thought I was going to hate that. And look at I love it. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of that too. People at the at, at a paint and sip that like look like they're going to throw up before it starts. Really, really like sick. Like they got there early and then they have just been sitting there for half an hour like in a panic. Or mm -hmm. they sit like this. And then at the end they're like, I didn't think I could do it. Look at what I did. And you're like, I don't know. Been there. Okay. Well, let's do this other tree. Um, actually, let's address the sky in case you want to do anything with that. So this is kind of a gray sky. The water is super light. Um, I am going to... What I'll do is kind of make these round like this, so like there's a layer of clouds that are up at the top. Okay, and then sometimes you get a little peak of light below it, but that's, I don't know. I'm still working on clouds. Working on it. And I'll make this my little island out here or whatever. And like robin's egg blue. Mm. Have you ever seen a real robin's egg? I feel like I have. But maybe I just made it up in my head. I don't think you have. Wow, that's not what I mean. <laughs> I think your childhood... I think you should put it on your bucket list. <laughs> I think I've seen one, but not... A broken one, probably. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Sorry. Keep your foot. Well, really, that's what you want to see. You don't want to see one that's um, not broken because there's a baby in it, and you don't want to disturb the baby. No, you never want to disturb the baby. Don't disturb the baby. Um, I was just listening to one of the stuff you should know about um, things that are are untrue, and they said that touching a baby bird didn't didn't necessarily mean that mother would leave it and because your smell was all is over it. Something so that you moms... leave it alone and not think something's wrong with it because a lot of times they're learning how to fly and that's why mm -hmm. they're on the ground and the mother was like waiting going okay you know get up and try it again <laughs> and it's like somebody comes along and goes oh my god that's like the deer oh so sad. sad 
that the moms leave the baby deer uh, because um, they don't smell like deer, so the predators don't come. So in the firstborn, they just smell like birth, and so they leave them alone. And then people will think that they're abandoned, and they'll bring them to like an animal sanctuary. And then the mom comes back, and she's like, "Food to make her milk." Well, she also she she just le- she just goes in the woods and watches it so that she doesn't attract a predator. Oh know? no! And so she has to watch it get Tell taken me. away. That's a horrible story. <laughs> I know it's really sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. You brought it up. <laughs> sorry. All right, we're doing this one. I don't care. Come on, that's awful. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of dark room, then I'm gonna use a different one. So don't don't take the baby deer don't away. Don't touch if you the see babies. Them. Let nature do its thing. It's gonna it's gonna plan. You're swaying a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this one they go down a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I think I would go down. But I want to get wider as I go down. Okay? And there's actually some in the front. And these, really, if you do the branches like this, what happens is the, this is one's closer to, is that they kind of go down on all of them like that. Just don't overthink a tree. I mean, really, what's the show about in this picture? The little things. The little things, okay? And that's why we're doing them a little bit later, because if we did it first, then you would be like, trees? I don't care about drawing trees. I'm done. <laughs> but this way, you have to do them. have to do them now. I don't know if these go up or down. That's not going I don't know. Good. I'm making all mine go up. Because I don't want to do that. I don't know. I don't know, but it still looks like a tree, right? It could be a, just a mangled tree. Or a tree that's all stove up. Stove right? up? Christina? Have you not heard that? Mm -hmm. That's how you say mangled in Maine. Mm. Stove up. She's all stove up. Usually it has to do with something like a car. Mm. Or, uh, for example... Uh, riding a lawnmower is all so up. <laughs> it is. Oh, I forgot the other color. God, I am so tired. You can do it. You can do it. I can. Don't forget about your black and white. Okay, thank you. I have been painting today. I went at 11. I was done at 5. And I was like done at 4. And then I went, well, let me just touch a couple more things. And then I was in. Okay, so yeah, I'm not going to bring it all the way in there because I'm going to bring the light grass. And, I'll, and I, this paint, somebody else's watercolor, I don't know who did it. I'm sorry. Um, it has all kinds of stuff that's happening down here. You know, um, Lupin's growing a field. You know, you could just do tall grass. But what you have to do is you have to really fill it in. And use different colors because that's fun. Okay? Um, I think we're ready, right? Ready for Lupin's and then... We're okay. ready. The only other thing you might want to do is that whatever you've got in the sky is kind of reflected in the wall. Actually, I need to do the reflections of these trees. So, uh, there it is. Oh, I didn't do it down here. Oops, I didn't do it down here. Okay. So, a little side to side, not much, but a little suggestion of the reflection. Okay? And, oh, and if you want a little, uh... Maybe side to side a little something about the sky. I'm going to keep this pretty light because I, one of my favorites, where's the blue that I like so much? You have it? Oh, here it is. Um, one of the favorite pictures that I've done this spring is the one of the little house with the red roof. So try that one. I was actually all by myself that day, I think. Um, right? You didn't do it. And there's a lot of, the paper and I really like that. Okay. <laughs> so this is what what we're gonna do with the lupins. Okay. 
Sometimes, let's see, look at this one. Sometimes you have one that's just like this. And what they are, for the most part, are little skinny rectangles, okay? Now, sometimes you have them alone. Sometimes you have a little bit that shows like this, okay? Sometimes you have them in the grass. So you have, and what would happen to the one that was right here, Daphne, comparatively mm. to this one? Any bigger? It's a little bigger because it's closer to us, okay? So you have to keep that in mind that that's how you're setting up distance. And also, the ones that are farther away will kind of look like they'll all get kind of mushed together, okay? Um, so there's that. Um, that's that. I'm just going to make a couple that go over a little bit right next to each other. And then right in this section, it's just a whole bunch. And this blue, I mean, they really are this kind of periwinkle blue. Apparently, there's no such thing as real true blue flowers. They're always purpley. Purpley, yeah. I think I read that one time. Do you mm -hmm. agree? Yeah, I think that's a thing. And I don't have that color, but you can't really call it blue, apparently, because it's not supposed to be blue in nature. So if you do have a blue flower, it is synthetically manufactured. Okay, so I'm going to put some in like this. And the other thing is, is that if you don't have them touching, you're going to have to draw green in between there, and it's going to look gross. So I would do it. I would fill them in. Okay? Okay, so now I'm looking, you know, if, if it's confusing. But if I look at this, and then I look at what I have, it would be like, okay, well, that's kind of what, what's going on. There's kind of a patch of them, and then there's a few spread out. Okay? That'll help you to, um, you know, keep them in the right track. And we're going to do more with it. But start with that. And then up here, along this green line I started, with just a lot of purple. And I'm just going to make a purple little section here. But I'm going to draw it up and down. And if you want more, I'm going to put some over here too. Because our field is about to erupt. Like, I went to mow around them, and there's really nothing left. I mean, it's a pretty big field. It's going to be quick, right? I'll okay. send you pictures, so keep, check it out. I'll send a picture of it. I'm not kidding. Okay, do this. Do your, do this part. I'm going to get caught up down here. Um, so, so I pretty much done with the big part of my mural at Tesoro New Italian Restaurant in downtown Bangor. And today, the other day I had a margarita pizza. I mean, it's so good, it right? Really good. I'm sure that whole idea of putting balsamic vinaigrette on pizza has probably been around in Italy for like, you know, 2,000 years, but I didn't know anything about it. So and it's promising. Until, I mean, I've known a little, a couple of years now, but I didn't know. It's so cool, so delicious. And then today, I got um, an eggplant parmesan, and it was delish. Mm. And I must say that the prices are really good. And I was like, yeah, I'll get, I'll get one of those larges. And it was two sandwiches, which I think a normal person would be perfectly happy with. Well, I ate the leftover tuna from last night, so <laughs> I didn't get it. But I don't eat it very often, so. Well, um, okay, so I'm here jealous. I had a little different situation on my hands with the. I have to do it light. It's not the pink ones because that wouldn't that wouldn't show up as well. I do like the pink ones though. I do like the pink ones. Not many white ones, but a lot of different ones. Some purple okay, ones. So you have to draw these I'm just gonna do in kind of little cyclones. Is that thunder? I think we're supposed to have a thunderstorm. Oh. No, I, not today. No? I don't think so. I thought
thought we were supposed to. I thought we were supposed to. That was your dad moving around upstairs. Oh, you're right. <laughs> it's like Thunder. I really want a thunderstorm. And, uh, um, I did just hear a train though. Right here? Yeah. Well, that's probably what it was. Let's do it. Let's finish. The next thing I want to do is there's a few pat patches. Oh wait, a minute. let's just do more with the with the flower. So what you're gonna do is I have two other shades of purple, but I'm mostly gonna do it with the the dark one, I think. And what you're gonna do is um, lupins grow. It's it's a stalk, and they're um, the little blossoms or whatever they're in layers one after one on top of another so you want to think about that but you're thinking about that they're little um and little flowers so if you dot this and they do get a little skinnier at the top but think about it being in layers and then at the end you want to do just a couple on top does that look like it If you like the pink, you could probably, let me see if I can add, okay, but you want, the thing is you want the two colors. You want a light one and you want a dark one. Um, here's like, oh, that's not really dark enough. Do you see a super dark pink in there? Um. No, I know I got one. Yeah. I know I have one. I just didn't see it. Okay, so go ahead and do this. If you're working with your pencil, what you might have to do is, if you didn't draw them lightly to start with, is to take your eraser and kind of erase the little spots. You know what I want to do tonight? Watch ridiculousness. I bet it'll be on. And that's like my relaxing show. Should I be ashamed? Mm. You gotta do what you do to unwind, I guess. Mm hmm Okay, so I erase those so that they're lighter, because if they're not lighter, then you can't see the spots. Um, I'm trying to think about what, what things usually befall people. Mm -hmm. um, huh? Yeah, when they're doing lupins. It's been a while. I have a painting that we did at the Boom House years ago. I think maybe it's a size issue sometimes. I think sometimes people do them really, really small and they get kind of swallowed up by the, um, the grass. Is that normal, how much water's on it? Oh, gosh, you scared me. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's just condensation. It's, it's pretty humid. Okay. That's the hot. No, it's the whole water pipe, but it it's just, just it's, like co it's colder than the, the air in here, so it makes... Okay, just checking. Yeah, it can be quite startling when you get rained on in the basement. Yeah, I was a little alarmed. Here, I hear the train again. I don't know if it'll make it. That's a summer sound in Maine. In Orono is the sound of the train, and then the, in the evening. Okay. Uh, right. I'm starting to lose my. Alright, so I'm not going to overthink it. I'll just get a little darker. The more they're all clumped together, the less all those little things are going to, details are going to show. So. But I think it works. It's 
kind of like the most labor intensive thing I can I can do drawing wise. I don't really do flowers very much. Kind of like how I cook, you know, like anything that takes a lot of work, I shy away from. Yeah. If you're gonna do something with a lot of detail, make it small, and then it's manageable. Use the right tool. If you're gonna work small on a small piece of paper, you know, use something. Use something small. A small point pen. Or pencil. Uh, pencil. Mar uh, just like a pen, a sharpie or something. <gasps> okay, let's do this. Um, we're gonna do the dirt, and then we're gonna do. <laughs> then we're gonna do the um, the rest of the grass. Okay, so what I want you to do is right along here. I want you to take a darker brown, and you're gonna color this right flat, very horizontal, and get it a little bit wider as you get towards the side of the paper, and skinnier at the top, and then take a lighter color, although these are both exactly the same. So that will work. Okay, and then do this. Okay? And the fact that it just even gets skinny when it goes in, in here will help tuck that away into the leaves. It's kind of a cool little effect. Okay? And then, I'm trying to do that down here. So down here, I'll color this a little bit. Oh. I met some of my little kids that take my art class that I had never met in real life that I just have been taking it online. I saw them out riding their bikes in the woods and I, I recognized them from their pictures. They're funny. But their dad didn't really know. He kind of did, kind of didn't. I think he might have been in my gym class before. Okay, the other thing... <laughs> the other thing I want to do is to put a little bit of dark with a dark color scope. Because mostly, if you squint your eyes, a very, very light green, okay? Um, but over here, it's dark, okay? So get rid of this. If you have a light green here, get right over that green line because we don't want that. It won't make any sense. And then you're going to color up and down in this area. Think grass. You know, that grows up and down mm -hmm. like that. You get a nice dark. It doesn't have to be. You can add another color in there. But that will... Put that in the shadows. I love it. I love the ocean. I love it when it's like this. <laughs> what? I'm really getting tired. I am tired. I've done a lot of things today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then dark over here. So I'm going to use one of my darker greens. So tonight will be the last um, class in a row after like s almost 70, like 60. I'm not sure. I think I forgot to post a few, but I've got on my YouTube channel, I have 66 or 67 classes for you to choose from them at any time of the day or night. You may go on YouTube and you can draw anything from dogs to pirates to Elsa to Moana. Help me out, Daph. Mm. Houses, camps, lighthouses, balloons. I mean, it goes on. 66. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to keep going. So, you can do that. I will have class, my plan is that I will have class Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 in the morning and next Friday at 8 at night. Unless something comes up and then I would do a different weekend night. I don't know what in the world will come up, but... <laughs> what would come up? So I'm just... I, 
I think the thing I'm doing, you know, use your whole arm. Think grass. Let it grow up over the bottoms of these trees. We want to tuck this stuff into the grass. And, you know, this is a fun time to use your different colors, right? Mm -hmm. I have about seven greens. I'm going to use them all. I've used one, two, three, four, five, five so far. I love this one right here. Okay, and right here what I want to do is I want the grass to go over the edge of the path here. So I might need a different color. Oh, I need to get up here, so. This is another kind of outcropping here, or bush or something. If you want a bush, you kind of round it. Okay? If you'd like to schedule a, uh, like a Zoom class, or even a private lesson or whatever, um, let me know. It'd be fun. And we, I also, you know, kind of want to do a painting lesson, but you have to have paint. So, well, you don't have to have paint. I guess you could use colors, but you really it would be more fun not to have a pencil if everybody else is painting that's in your group. So, um, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to quite pull that together yet. I got lots of pictures up in my sleeve to try out. There's that. Like I said, I gotta get this bottom of this tree, I want it covered right up. If you want to, I think I might bring this around here a little bit. And this is one of those things, your, your own style, the way you, the way you draw, the way you put mark colors down, um, that makes everybody's unique, okay? There's no right or wrong. We're not, it's not reality. You're not gonna draw photorealism from somebody's watercolor, right? You have to have the information. If you wanna draw photorealism, then you have to, you know, have their, a lot of patience and a lot of time and a photo. a photo to start with and a really good one. I think I thought of this too the other day that um, part of part of do, drawing the things that I choose for us to do for classes and the reason why they're easy is because I've chosen something that I know there's just some things that are going to be simple for you to follow along with. So, um, if you're doing, for the most part, what you need is some darks and some lights. You have to, like, look at your picture and squint at it, and I want you to, like, then look at your picture and see if you can see different things in the picture. S strong shapes that stand out, and if you can, if everything just becomes a blur, it's going to be hard to draw. Um, there's definitely some tricks to it. That's one of the things that I've been doing for, you know, at least 15 years of teaching is trying to find pictures that are great to learn from. So it can be almost anything, but there's definitely a little bit of planning. A lot of times I can probably make something simple from any kind of picture, but um, I might cut a little bit out, like I might take Photoshop out, erase some parts. Like this one, I kind of think this has a bunch of boats in it. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. It just, just, you know, it, it's sometimes, I mean, it, it makes it a great picture, but it's sometimes not necessary. It's kind of the problem I have, like, like with these murals, just like putting too much in to remember what it's really all about. So here I'm trying to, you know, again, I want to make the tree on the other side of this grassy bank. I don't know if they look like lupins or something else. Oh well. Okay. With your 
your drawing, you want lights and darks, you want places where it's super dark, you want something super dark, and you want something super light, and then you want some things in between. You know, depending on what you're doing. There's lots of rules, but they're not, you don't use every rule for every single picture. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Design elements. Uh, let me see. I don't like this area. I think it's raw. So I'm going to take a little bit of dark and I'm going to make some little leafy bits. Right? See how that just changes things? I might have a little, you know, change in the, how the grass where the lupin goes in. It has these very funny, distinct leaves. They're kind of round with. That's good. What do you think? Is that good enough? That yeah, looks pretty good to me. <sighs> well, thanks for uh, for watching with me, and some of you have watched a lot with me, and maybe some people are watching tonight, maybe they're not, but um, I had fun. And um, I will see you Tuesday at 10, or maybe next, next Friday. And again, in the meantime, if you want to draw and you just like don't know what to draw, don't know where to start, you got a piece of paper. Go to YouTube or go to my Facebook page and just pull one up. And I have a feeling that you can probably watch 10 minutes and get started and then maybe be, <laughs> maybe be all set. But All right, thank you. Have a good weekend. Looking forward to June. Let's see. Let's show you the up close so you can pause it on there. Hi, Mom. Hi, Angel. Hey, Emily. Are you watching with the kids? Hey, Veronica. Hey, Sue. Say hi to Tony for me. Amy? Shivani? I'm Barbara. Lisa Fox. Tammy? My cousin Lynn. Ruby? Sonia? Hey, Matias. I can't wait to see yours. Okay. I'd love to see anybody's pictures. Share with me, please. Bye. Thank you.